So this will be a short tutorial about how to adjust the truss rod on an acoustic guitar. Uh, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Florentin. Uh, feel free to give this video a thumbs up when you're done watching it. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, you're more than welcome to do that. Now, I'm not a guitar tech by any means, but I did repair quite a few instruments over the years. And I'm always doing some kind of maintenance work, changing strings, adjusting uh, saddles, adjusting the truss rod, uh, adjusting the action of the strings, and just small repairs like that for many, many years. So I know a little bit, but do take my uh, information with a grain of salt and uh, consult a uh, qualified technician if you need work done on your instrument. So having said all of that, um, why do we have to even mess with a truss rod ever on the instrument? Well. I'll give you a couple of reasons. Number one, sometimes when you buy the instrument, uh, sometimes the company that sold it to you uh, didn't take the time to set it up properly. They'll just throw it in a box uh, and then send it out. And then you end up with an instrument that might sound something like this. You know, all buzzy and that's not very pleasant. And also sometimes, even though, even if the instrument does come with a good setup, over uh, time, you know, with uh, weather changes and humidity changes, the neck of the instrument does move up and down a little bit, and sometimes it even warps a little bit. So then we have to adjust the truss rod. Now the harder way to do this is to adjust the saddle. The easier way to do it is to just mess with the, with the truss rod a little bit and you will need a wrench like this, which probably came with your instrument, hopefully came with your instrument. And the truss rod, this is a classical guitar and most classical guitars will not have a truss rod. This is an Epiphone Pro 1. This is the 2.0, the two inch wide neck. And these do come with a truss rod and you're usually gonna find the truss rod in here, right there. And sometimes up here, depending on the instrument. So um, here's the basic idea uh, for working with a truss rod. Uh, so imagine the neck of your instrument being straight and if the neck moves up a little bit, then the strings will go up at an increasing angle. When that happens, the higher frets of your instrument, you know, the strings will become harder to push down. So you have the strings that are, then you have strings that are too high in the higher frets. Now if the neck goes the other way, if it goes down a little bit, then what happens is the strings start touching the fingerboard. So if this neck were to go down, then it'll pull the strings along and then the strings would touch the fingerboard and make a buzzing sound. That's what's happening with this one here. It's a very nasal buzzy, unpleasant sound. So I did that on purpose to show you how to fix it. So basically, when that happens, when either of the two things happen, you have to adjust the neck via the truss rod. And you wanna think the following words, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So what that means, guitar technicians use that all the time. Righty tighty means that when you turn the truss rod to the right, to your right, righty tighty, you're making the, the, the neck tighter so the strings go down. When you go left, to your left, lefty loosey, you're loosening up the neck, you're allowing it to come up, up this way, so then the strings go back up. Right now on this guitar, the strings are very low, very buzzy. Okay, so I have to go, uh, I have to go to my left because I have to loosen up the neck. Right now the neck is too tight going down on this side going down. I have to loosen it up so it comes up a little bit so the strings are lifted up in the process. So um, you should use a desk. I'm not going to use a desk right now. Uh, you just want to put the truss rod in there, the truss rod wrench in there and uh, make sure it's a good match, hopefully the one that came with your instrument. And you want to turn, I'm going to turn to my left towards myself, and I'm gonna go two turns at a time. Do not go too much at a time. I'm gonna go two turns at a time. And uh, 
it's a little bit difficult without having a table right here, but that's okay. So, okay, so that was two turns. It's not gonna be enough, but still, I would suggest you don't go more than two turns at a time. It's already a little bit better, so the neck basically is moving up a little bit. So, now some people think that you have to loosen the strings when you do that. I wouldn't suggest that because you have to keep trying the strings as you, as you move the neck either way. You have to keep trying the strings to see if they sound good. So I, I wouldn't loosen the strings. Uh, so again, a couple of turns at a time. Giving the neck some time between turns. Giving it time to adjust. There's one more. I would also say that you should protect your bass wound strings from the wrench itself so you don't put a, you know, you should put a dent in them. So that was, let me do one more turn here. Here's my second turn, all the way to my left. Well, as far as I can reach without popping a string. So that's two more turns better still buzzy though so I gotta go uh, a little bit more but you got to give your neck time to adjust because you're working with wood um, so it needs time to adjust as you as you keep bending the fingerboard basically and the neck right okay it is a little bit awkward without a table but I'm working, uh, I'm used to doing this without a table. I just adjust them on the go. That was a couple of more turns. Better every time. Uh, this was really low. I lowered it a lot on purpose to show you the difference. So that's one turn, almost full turn there. I'll go another turn. Okay. Let's see. Almost there. I would say maybe four or six more turns. So look, I'm I'm pulling the strings up with my other finger so I don't pull them up with a wrench and maybe break a string. See? You see what I'm doing? And then I grab the wrench. And I go up without a string being in the way. You know what I mean? Same thing, I pull the string up and then I move the wrench and that slipped. Let's see what happened there. Okay, so this is a classroom instrument. Okay, I would not go very, very high on these uh, because a lot of the kids that play on these are beginners and uh, Beginners don't have sufficient strength to push the strings down all the way. So I would say that for my purpose here at my school, I would not go very high with the string action. And I just went two more full rounds. So let's see. I'm a very heavy player, uh, so I can make almost any guitar buzz if I want to, uh, but the normal player and the student player, this is, uh, this is pretty normal right now. It's pretty good. Also, your guitar will get out of tune while you do that. So you'll have to retune. These are new strings too, so that's a part of the problem there. So let's try this uh, with a normal touch, not too heavy of a touch. I would say that's pretty good for maybe for a beginner student, maybe for strumming chords. Maybe. 
So let's see. Alright, so for our purposes here, this guitar is in good shape, uh, not too high, not too low of a string action, um, and that's basically how you adjust the truss rod. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them at the bottom. And now if you don't feel comfortable doing this on your instrument, uh, do see a guitar technician. Uh, also be very careful not to drop this on top of your instrument because you're going to put dents in it, okay? Uh, and again, be careful not to pop a string as you turn. Make sure to get the string out of the way with your fingers and then turn the wrench whichever way you're going. All right, uh, I had a friend uh, here on YouTube who bought a, a, an acoustic guitar last week and they ended up with a buzzer. And I, this, the purpose, one purpose for this video is to try to help them uh, maybe adjust uh, but also make sure that every time you buy an instrument, you buy from a vendor that has very good return policies or exchange policies. So that's always very important. If you have questions or comments, write them at the bottom. Thank you for watching my video. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.